let Dr. Trump, it's let Reverend Charletta know. Charletta, we're ready. And uh, we'll okay. go ahead to introduce our amazing speaker today. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome. We are so glad that you've joined us for um, our next part of Black History Month as we talk about art as resistance. And tonight we are focusing on dance. We want to thank you for considering all the events that we have been putting on and being present. I am Charlotta Green and I work in the Center for Global Partnerships and Learning. Uh, with uh, our fearless leader, Dr. Gabby and Dr. Brahme. And so I'm one of the graduate assistants. We sponsor many of the um, cultural events that take place. And so whether it's Black History or Latino um, History Month or Asian American or Asian Awareness, Asian uh, Pacific Month, um, Women's History Month, we support and celebrate all of those. We have a podcast called Elevating Voices. Uh, it is our hope as the center um, to make sure that we are elevating the voices and the work of a variety of different people that we often do not hear their voices um, or see their work. And so we're hoping that we do that with our students and with our guests. Tonight, we are excited to have with us Dr. Julio Hansen, um, who is a SAG actor, uh, entertainer, and the principal of Loyola, Loyola Village Fine and Performing Arts Magnet in Los Angeles, California. He has more than 25 years of experience and he attributes most of his artistic talent to his mother and father, John and Yolanda Hansen, both classically trained musicians from Howard University. H-U, you know. So <laughs> um, Dr. Hansen is a vocalist and performed with Grammy recognized um, Names such as Tony Braxton, Prince, Kalis, and Lale, to name a few. He's also been in feature films and stage productions on the direction of Ron Howard and Louis Avalos. And so we want to just make sure that we highlight those things. His bio is attached and you can read more. What I really want to highlight is that he uses his gifts of music and art and dance and choreography um, and highlights Panamanian culture in that. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background on his education, Dr. Hansen holds a Bachelor of Science in Political Science, International Relations from UCLA, um, a bilingual teaching um, credential from California State University, um, Dominguez Hills, a Master of Education and Administration from California State University, Los Angeles, and a Doctorate of Education from Pepperdine University, researching the power of artistic activism. Um, I would be remiss if I did not say that he was a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. And so we look forward to all that Dr. Hansen brings to us tonight as we celebrate Black history as we talk about dance as an art of resistance. Thank you. Con queja de indio y grito de chombo dentro de la cantina de Pancha Mancha, trasumando ambiente de timba y quilombo, se oye que la cumbia resonando está. Baile que legar a la abuela africana, con cadena chata y pelo cuscú, fuerte y bochinchosa, danza interiorana, que bailó cual nadie, Juana Calambú. Pancha Mancha tiene la cumbia caliente, la de Chepigana y la del Chocó, y cuando borracha se alegra a la gente, llora el tamborero, llora Chimbombo. Chimbombo. Es el negro que meme embrujada. Chimbombó es el negro de gran corazón. Le raya una vieja cicatriz la cara. Tiene mala huma y alma de león. Y el tambor trepida y la cumbia alegra. Meme baila el negro como un animal. Llora los desprecios que le hace la negra. Y es que quiere a un gringo la samba fatal. Con un clavo dicen que saca. Aporrea el cuero que su mano hinchó 
Mientras más borracho su golpe es más bravo. Juma toca cumbia, dice Chimbombo. Vengador celoso, se alza de un respingo cuando Meme acaba la cumbia y se va, cogida del brazo de su amante gringo, rumba al dormitorio de Pancha Mancha. Del puñal armado los persigue y ambos mueren del acero del gran Chimbombo. Y la turba multa de negros y zambos siente que a la raza Chimbombo vengó. ¡Húyese! ¡Húyese! Así el cauca, el negro bravío. Y otra vez la cumbia trepidando está. Pero se dijera que no tiene el brío de la vieja cumbia de Pancha Mancha. Es que falta meme, la ardiente mulata. Y es que falta el negro que al cauca se oyó. Siempre habrá clientela y siempre habrá plata. Pero nunca otro hombre como Chimbombo. Glad to be here with you all today. Uh, I want to first of all thank Laura from uh, the group Panama Mola Puerto Tambor. We have a group typical that we dance together. She's from Panama. What part of Panama are you from again? The capital of Panama. Panama City. And I want to say that it's a pleasure to be back here at Pepperdine. And this is actually my first official uh, presentation back at Pepperdine as a doctor. So yay! <laughs> I've been here before as a student presenting about music and how music moves the world and how music is part of us, right? So um, I, what you just saw was a dramatization of a poem that was written back in the, uh, well, in the 20th century, in the 20th century, by Demetrio Corsi. It was called Incidente de Cumbia. And it's about, as you saw, a, a black man who has a woman he falls in love with and she falls in love with a white North American man. And that's the last straw for him. And he can't take it so much that he ends up killing both of them. And he realizes what he's done, he's, he's hurt his own rage, but at the end, he still feels like he's victorious because he's um, he stood up for something, right? So the poem speaks of what was going on at that time. People's sentiment at the time was like the, the influence of other people from outside of Panama was so strong and so colonial that I represent Panamanian people. And then her falling in love with someone who's not Panamanian represented that influence that was taking over our country. So Demetrio Corsi was not Afro-Panamanian, but he was um, a, a representative to the African uh, diaspora of the islands, the West Indian islands. And so he had a love for the African people. So at first, I didn't want to do the poem because when I first read the poem, I think this is a poem about anger in a, in a black man who's killing. Mm -hmm. But it, it speaks to more, it speaks about what the sentiment was at the time. And it's not about him killing, it's about him standing up for what he believes in. And so, um, so yeah, so, and I'm here today today to talk to you about Congo and its connection to African-American culture, connection to Africa, connection to all of us here as a dance. I'm barefoot today because the, song, the dance of Congo, you dance barefoot because it connects you to the earth. Our feet is, is our connector. And so I was gonna dance in my shoes, but I didn't know this should be danced barefoot. And also I would like to say before I get into it to thank the ancestors of the Congo tradition, is it matriarchal, matriarchal, um, matriarchal uh, culture? And so I wanna thank the queen of the Congo. There is an actual queen of the Congo. Thank her for leading our Panamanian people of the Congo. And I ask the ancestors to give me grace as I present to you part of my culture 
and as we dance part of the Congo. So, you know, I'm, I'll beat you up later. But <laughs> as I was doing this, as I was doing this presentation at home, I was trying to get together a PowerPoint, and I could not get the PowerPoint together for some reason. I just could not; it just did not come naturally to me. And it kind of reminded me of Teresa and I. We know we're both doctors here from Pepperdine University. The stress of PowerPoints and presentations. And, and I was like, I can't do this. I'm going back to school and I'm doing another PowerPoint. So I wanted this to be, that was the PowerPoint that that's all you get. <laughs> so, um, but I wanted this to be interactive. I wanted to feel what the music and the culture is about as opposed to seeing a PowerPoint. So that's why. I didn't get a part of it. Plus, I kept looking at the pictures of me dancing. I couldn't find anything, right? I, I, looked, I said, well, man, I have video somewhere of me dancing. And I said, I can't find my video. It was the universe telling me, no, stop. You don't need to do videos and pictures of you dancing. Just dance. Right? <laughs> That's why I'm here. Anyway, so um, I have my cheat sheet. I'm going to stop my cheat sheet here. Um, basically, I wasn't necessarily trained in dance as classical dance, classic dance. Um, but I've taken many different types of dance. So music has always been in, in my life as far as dance. Um, you know, I always joke that if I ever need to be resuscitated, just put on a good song. <laughs> I, trust me, if I am tired, dead tired, laying down in my bed, and I can't get out of bed, I can put on a good song. It gets me right up. I got that from my mother who was here. My mother from Panama as well. She is she's born. I'm going to come up and fill your, fill your vestuario out. So my mother was born in Rio Bajo, Panama, and I asked her to come and present her one of the many costumes of, I shouldn't say costumes, not costumes, of the attire of um, the Congo. And she's wearing what they call a pollera. And this pollera is basically a dress, right? The national dance of Panama is also a pollera. It's a different type of pollera, but this is the Congo pollera. And as you see, it has different uh, cards on the floor. And the Congo tradition basically, it, it's not sure exactly where it came from, but we do know that the, thank you, Mom, you never see. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm saying, I'm sorry. part of that thing, I see that. <laughs> I'll get her up again to dance for you all. <laughs> um, the Congo tradition came from, from Africa, um, most likely the Congo in Africa or West Africa, where um, the tradition remained and sustained itself in, in Panama. It was developed or sustained by African slaves that were in, brought to Panama, and they fought against the European colonials um, so much of the European European colonials had to break a deal with them and say, okay, we'll leave you guys alone as long as you stay where you are, we'll stay where we are. And so they were able to stay where they are in their in the mountains and they sustain, you know, maintain their cult the culture of the Congo. The culture of the Congo developed because when they were slaves, the Europeans used to give them scraps of cloth. They said, I don't want this dress anymore. You can have that, right? I don't want this shirt anymore. You can here take this shirt, right? And so what they would do, they take the shirt, they take the dress, they take all the cloth, and they would make patterns in the Congo dress, like you see my mother had on, right? And so that's how the, the Congo the dress came about. It's a pattern, different patterns of different cloths connected together. Um, the flowers in the hair represent the crown uh, of the women. So the, the queens had their crowns, and the women wear their flowers in their hair as their crowns. Uh, it's a matriarchal, like I said, matriarchal, heck that word, matriarchal um, culture. And so the woman is seen as the most important person in the community. It used to be that the woman was the most important person of the community. But somehow it flipped, because men now we think that we're the most important person in the community, but we're not, <laughs> right? It's a woman, because she has the power to bear a child. So when you have the power to, to bear or to have a child, that makes you powerful. And if you don't bear a child, you still are the most powerful because you're the one that people come to for guidance. You're the one that people come to for for, for help. You know when people come to you for love. You know when people come to for all of those different things. So the so the woman <laughs> has so many different facets of her that makes her 
the most important person in society. And that's why in the Congo, whether she's a mother, whether she's a sister, whether she's a daughter, she's still the most important person. So in this culture of the Congos, you have the queen. And then you have, as you see here, this is the crown of the queen. It's a very elaborate crown, okay? Made of jewels and natural. This one has maybe, you know, it's not real jewels, but it, usually the jewels are things of nature, things that come from, you know, from the natural element of the, of the earth. And of course you see the pattern here is different pieces of cloth together, okay? Then you have the king, who is somewhere around there? Juan de Dios, his name is Juan, John of God. And he's doing his thing or whatever, right? Like I said, he's not that important. <laughs> but you have the pajarito, which is the little bird. Because it's, it's all a story. You have a queen, you have a king, the pajarito. Now the pajarito is, is a very uh, ambiguous character because the pajarito was seen as the person who would warn us that the European colonials were coming to harm us. So they would blow their whistle or, or sing to let us to warn us that we were going to be attacked. But then also the pajarito was a traitor. And the pajarito played the other side too. He would be over there um, with the colonials and the colonials would say, hey, you know what? You leave us to where they are, but we'll set you on a high tree, right? So it's a very ambiguous character in this whole story. And then you have other stories uh, other characters in this story of the Cimarrones, who were the escaped slaves. Um, so, my cheat sheet again. Um, I've, I've done a lot of dances, you know, that are either just beautiful dances or some dances that have that are about resistance. And some of you have danced too. Like, who, who's, a dance, who's danced some different dances here? There's something that you try new. You've done something new. Difference. Swing. Where did you dance? Bomba. Bomba, okay. Bomba. From where is that? Puerto Rico. Right, right, okay. Uh, Who's it from Belize? Okay. Anybody else? So we've danced that. Like I've, I've taken tap, I've taken ballet, I've taken swing, I've taken flamenco, I've taken dapka, the Palestinian dance, right? I've friends from the Palestinian, and you know that that's their resistance to, to dance, right? Mm -hmm. They dance, and it's their resistance, their way of, of speaking against the authority above them, right? So this dance is it also speaks to resistance of the European colonial, like I said. Um, the, the Congo dance is uh, an African-based tradition, like I said, and it dates back to the 16th century, and it utilizes um, song and the theatrical costumes. Um, the Congo men paint their faces black. And, and we know that in this country, in the United States, that painting your face was a faux pas, right? Mm -hmm. But for Panamanian people, to paint your face black was, it had a lot of symbolism. The symbolism that most speaks to me, though, is when they paint their face black to be seen. Mm -hmm. So it was impossible for the European people to not see them. So they painted their face black on top of their dark skin, mm -hmm. right? saying, this is who I am, and you will see me, whether or not you like me or not. They also, the Congo spoke in backward words. They spoke in words that you could not understand, that the Europeans could not understand. They, they, spoke, they spoke in backward words. They took their jackets. They turned them inside out. And they put the jacket on as a means of resistance. I'm doing this against you. I'm not going to do it the way you do it. <laughs> I'm immediately dressed in part of the attire of Congo because I'm, this is my resistance. Okay? So I'm going to show a video later on that you'll see some of the, the dancers as they dress in, in Congo. Right? So this is the way that they're resisting. Um, the... Um, the, the dance of the Congo is similar to how you have arts in other countries, such as like China, they had Tiananmen Square, they had art poets and muralists in China that were resisting authority. They had women in Zanzibar as well um, that used theater to, to fight against colonial, mm -hmm. fight against the lack of women presence. 
in education. So women from Zanzibar did that. And so this is a similar cultural expression of, of resistance. So I would like to, this time, show you a video so you can understand more about the Congo. And so I'll let our, you know, before I do that, can I just, I wanna thank some people for being here in the beginning. I wanna thank my daughters for being here, Marile and Natalia for joining me. Uh, they've been to Panama more at times than I have been to Panama. <laughs> um, and it's just beautiful that we've been able to maintain the culture of my mother through me, through their mother who was also, who was born in Panama and they've maintained the Panamanian culture. Um, I'd like to thank Marina Christian for being here, Marina Christian for being here, Pepperdine family, my friends, from the Panamanian community that are here right now as well, Roxanne and Mom, my friend, co-doctorate student, and my friends from the community as well, my, my committee that's here. So thank you all for being here. And right now, I'd like to show you this video about Panama Colo.
la, yo la sigo porque es de parte de mi abuela, toda mi familia. Le gusta esta tradición. The Cumbia, Congo and Terrible Songs announced the arrival of characters such as Matuanga or Pajarito, the entrance of struggling with devils or mandatory. of all ages, with or without even on vessels, play comes. The word play in the Congo and other festivities has a descendant of meanings of celebration is the one that expresses the participation of its performers. <laughs>
So I just it's time to learn geography. Now hey everybody, we've reached our first set of twin countries, the <laughs> Okay. Um so Panama, the Congo tradition is very much alive in Panama. There was a time that Congo was not accepted as a national dance. It was still not accepted as a national dance, but it's, it's accepted now as a cultural dance and it's respected by mostly afro panamanians and more people are beginning to accept and respect the dance, right? Um, so Congo has not always been something that Panamanians have been said, have said, oh yeah, we're Congo. Mm -hmm. But now it's, people are starting to gain that pride of it as a cultural dance and respect it for what it is. As you saw there, there are so many things, so many different symbols. The, the devil always wears red or black. And one of them is a higher devil, one is a lower devil. I, think the, I forget the black one, I think is the higher devil, and the red one is the lower devil. But they're both devils. Yeah. And uh, and we also have a dance. Um, we, we have a Congo Cismenos, uh, is a group here in Los Angeles, Congo Cismenos, that we mm -hmm. perform, you can say perform, but it's not a performance, as the lady said. Mm -hmm. We present our culture of Congo to people. And we have a part of the dance that is against the, the red devil, right? And the masks are handmade in Panama. They make those um, masks themselves. They have a whip that they at attach to, to a stick. And they actually whip people with it, right? So it's really, people are, are afraid of the diablo. <laughs> They're really afraid of the diablo because they actually do whip them, right? But once you catch the, the devil, then you're able to exercise that devil and um, hopefully baptize that devil into being an angel like you saw, or not being an angel, but being not a devil. All right. <laughs> um, so I um, am, am dressed in Congo, like I said, and I should not have diminished the value of the king because there is a value of the king. He does protect society. Um, but I wanted to augment the value of the queen, right? So, um, yes. So anyway, at this point, I'd like to show you some of the dance moves of the Congo. Once again, thanking our ancestors for this space to show you this culture, not as a performance, but as a, as a contribution of what Congo culture is about. So I brought a couple of drums. These are not Congo drums. There's an actual Congo tambor that is used. And it's typical to, to Panama. And the Congo dance is done, as you saw, mostly uh, the culture is on the uh, Atlantic side of Panama, the Caribbean side. Mm -hmm. Now you see Congo dancers and Congo people in the city of Panama mm -hmm. more than you did before. Um, but it's mostly on, on the Atlantic side. So here are a couple of the moves for Congo. So when we're dancing Congo, you're straight up for some dances, right? So you one move is to step forward and step back, step forward and step back, and then you turn, you step forward. Very regal, right? You can imagine the king of the Congo dancing like that. Another move of the Congos is more, you see the African tradition in it, where it's more hips. Hips here, like that, right? You're still straight up and you're here, right? So that's one of the other moves of the Congo. Often, 
we, as you saw the lady singing at the end, what she was saying is that a lot of the songs just come up. They just make up these songs based on what real life is. She said, when, when your husband leaves, he says, good thing that he left. I hope he just how he's well. I don't care. You know, it's like basically, you just sing about real life. You don't worry about it. You sing about it, right? We also have some songs about um, uh, women that carry the food, the bandeja, the food. So I'm going to use this as an example here, but this is an example of a platter, and she's carrying her platter around, and me as a man would like to see what's in her platter, probably symbolizing, I want to see what she's about, not just what's in her platter, right? <laughs> So she carries her platter away from me. She doesn't want to show me what she has in her platter. So the dance move that corresponds to that is more here from looking what's in the platter. Mm -hmm. Trying to see what's in the platter. And so here, I'm lower. Like that. Then the other level, I taught, I said there's a high level. There's a medium level here. There's a lower level of the dance. A lot of dancers have that. They have that high, middle, and low. And the lower level of the dance is where you come here, lower, and you circle here. And you move like that. Here, it'll come with lower here. And there's a lower, lower level. <laughs> the lower level, the lower, lower level is when you come here and you dance like this, up towards like that, okay? And you're here. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate all those moves for you right now. If we can, hey, I'm out of breath. Okay, <laughs> I must be. This has been a week. So if we could play the um the audio from the Chimbombo after five minutes, maybe the same audio. And I'll demonstrate that, and then I'll hit you all up. Try to get into it. Even though you just said, <laughs> any questions while we're getting the movie together? I have a question. Sure. About when the basically when the sorry the devils that are being beaten up, do the devils symbolize the masters? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I'm not clear if I said that, or I was clear about that. The devil <laughs> symbolized the masters, okay. they symbolize mm -hmm. also the establishment mm -hmm. of European colonials. Mm -hmm. They wear either black or red, that's the colors. I can't remember the reason why it's black or red. Those are the only two colors that the devils wear though. Mm -hmm. And you see the Congos have various different colors. Now my, my costume is not, is not a traditional Congo costume. It's more of a, a festive Congo, mm -hmm. but Congo costumes, like I said, they come with the backwards jacket. They come mm -hmm. with different fabric. Mm -hmm. Um, mine is very organized in colors. It's not necessarily like that for the traditional costume. I just really like this one. <laughs> so, it has very natural, naturally blended cloth together, um, using feathers, using um, uh, things from the, from the ocean. Like we don't wear beads. We don't wear beads. So we wear like things from the ocean, like shale or, or maybe stones that are precious stones, right? That's why I don't have a bead, beads on. I have a whistle as well. That's what I use when I'm dancing. And that's kind of to call attention, me as the king, call attention to, uh, to my dance. I'm, doing, I'm dancing better than everybody else, right? So, <laughs> Don't want to call attention, or I call call attention to somebody else, to, to one of the queen, one of the ladies dancing. Okay, so we'll see. I can show you a little bit.
to say. Using our hands, very important. This is my rod, my king scepter, my crown. But the ladies also use their hands in the shape of a cross. The shape of the cross is to ward off the evils. So when you see the devil coming, and we have a devil in our group, would you like this? To ward off that devil. And as he falls, he falters, we exercise that devil. So that's a little bit about Congo. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you're connected to it. I hope it inspires you. And I hope that you go forward and speak about Congo and go forward and learn the dance. So what I, I'd like to end by whoever would like to join me here, I'm going to in the middle and dancing that music as well. So we'll play that. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, take off if you want. You feel free to do you. You don't have to, but you know. Yeah, yeah. The, the higher double and the lower double. Yeah. Can you elaborate the difference? Like, what, what, what's the difference there? Yeah. Okay. There's a there's a big story about it. Understanding that they represent the uh, oppressors, right? Right. right. What? Both they both represent the oppressors. The yes. Yes. Yeah. So the there story. are there are different stories about it. I, I do know there's a story about it, it took place during the time of the pirates. 15th century, 16th century. And so some places in Panama saw the pirates as evil, and some of them saw them as good. Some of them saw them in their red um, uh, attire. And some of them said, no, we're not going to wear red because um, that represents. So you, most of us, he says, that's not really red, it's orange. Mm -hmm. So we don't use the color red necessarily. Mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't have this right here in my costume, <laughs> but red symbolizes that, right? So as far as the, the difference, they both represent the oppressor, yeah. and I think one represents just more of a higher level of oppressor than the other one. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I should have I should have disclaimer that I should have said a disclaimer that I'm not the <laughs> expert. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, and so I apologize with no complete explanation. No, it's but good. um. I do love my culture. Mm -hmm. I do love learning. It's a growth process, a journey. Mm -hmm. And I love learning about the symbolism of the Congo culture and what it means to me. Having been born here in this country mm -hmm. and having um, the experience of uh, learning about um, the oppression that happened in Panama. We think that there's no, there were no slaves in, in Latin America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of slaves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we think that we, we this country is the only one that had slaves, that had the horrible history of slaves. Mm -hmm. But Latin America had many slaves. Mm -hmm. There's lots of racism, mm -hmm. just like here, mm -hmm. just like around the world. Mm -hmm. And so Congo for me represents my journey of learning more about my myself, mm -hmm. learning more about my culture mm -hmm. in the world, really. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Yeah. I'm trying to answer. <laughs> <laughs> the language, what is the language? So um, the language is, more, is Spanish because you have people that were brought over as slaves and then they had to learn Spanish. They changed their names to Spanish names as well um, because of the colonials, the Spanish, Spaniards. Um, and like I said, they a lot of the words too, some of the words, I don't know what they mean because they probably have like a different, like an African origin that I've never, that I've never spoken in Spanish before. Though I'm fluent in Spanish, but... Some of the words are different. You know, I was asking asking Laura about one of the words, and this, I mean, this was a different situation. It was a, a word in the poem that I was like, what does that translate as? Mm -hmm. We couldn't figure it out, really. But there are certain words in the poem, and I'm like, what does that mean? You know? And it may have some type of African origin. And like, for example, instead of saying, oh, like I said, they, they reverse the words, right? So instead of saying, um, que, so, que paso, which is, what happened, they switch paso and make so pa. Mm -hmm. So, so you start saying que paso, you say que so pa. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying the word si, you know, si means what? Yes. So instead of saying si, you would say what? 
East. East. Instead of saying, um, for guys, instead of saying um, loco, which means what? Crazy. Right? So my name is, might say what? Colo. Please colo. Please colo. I've heard you guys say that before. <laughs> you know, instead of another one that is switched. Mopi. Mopi, yeah. Instead of saying like, uh, what's happening, cousin? They say, what's what's happening in Simca? In English, basically, in translation. So you say, instead of saying, what's happening, primo? In Spanish, they say what's happening, mo pri. So that so that tradition of switching the words in reverse is actually maintained in Panama, and some people uh, still speak that way. You know, it's like it's common speech. You know, it's you know. So anyway, let's let's dance a little bit. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hansen, thank you so much for sharing your culture and the um, art of dance as resistance. Um, this has been uh, informative and beautiful. So thank you. Uh, thank you to your mother for yeah. sharing um, with us as well. Um, I hope that you all have enjoyed yourselves. You've enjoyed good food and you continue to fellowship um, in the room. Um, we invite you to continue uh, celebrating Black History Month with us. Um, as next week, we celebrate Artist Resistance Through Music um, with Dana Rice. And so we look forward to you uh, logging in through Zoom and um, again, partaking. So thank you again.
um, for the participation um, and for just this gift of um, looking at art in a variety of different ways through our cultural lenses. Dr. Gabby, you have anything? I want to thank everyone both online and here and my sincerest appreciation for Dr. Hansen and Reverend Charlotta Green, who's been instrumental in our Black History Month uh, celebrations. Um, there's tons of food. Please continue <laughs> eating. Take it with you, however you want to do this. Um, but thank you all for being here and breaking bread with us and celebrating um, and contributing to the spirit of what Pepperdine is. Have a wonderful evening. Everybody online, Charlotta, I know that it's way past your bedtime at this point or getting really close. Uh, it's okay. Close. Um, we will send you all forth with a blessing before we leave. Is that okay? Everybody good with that? Yes. Yeah. The God who calls the wind forth from the north, the east, the south, and the west, who whispers our names who knows our purpose and who invites us to use our bodies as we stand for solidarity, as we stand in resistance, as we stand to be human and be seen as human and to act as human. This God, whatever you call this God, is the God who sees you and knows you and invites you to stand as fully as you possibly can and all of your gifts and all of your strength and even all of the places where you find you may have weaknesses to be all that you have been purposed to be. So dance when you have an opportunity to dance, sing when you have an opportunity to sing, read and make merry poetry when you have an opportunity to do that. Be all that you have been sent to be in the world unapologetically that we might see the beloved community become, that we might see the gift of our diversity making us one. Go forth from this place, this night, in peace. Thank you, Charletta. Have a wonderful evening, and we're going to go ahead and cut the simulcast now. Sounds good. Good night. <laughs>